Okay. Hey, Jill, what's up, everybody? All right. This is going to be a video of things that you must do on your first trip to Saigon or just coming to Saigon. It's going to have some touristy stuff in it and it's going to have some non touristy stuff in it. So I'm going to break it down. The first place I'm going to recommend, the first thing you want to do pretty much when you land in Vietnam is try the Vietnamese food. Vietnamese food is amazing. It's probably one of the things you should focus on during your trip is eating all the different cuisines that Vietnam has to offer. So we're at uh, Ho Ti Ki Market, which is a very famous one in District 10. I will include the address for this and all this stuff. So I've filmed this before, but a lot of you will be new people watching the channel. So this video will take a lot to produce in a lot of different locations. So I would appreciate it if you give it a, a smash that like button, please leave a comment, please. And the most important thing of all to help me subscribe to the channel. If not, no worries. So <clears throat> this market predominantly focuses on street food. Uh, this is quail egg, seafood, very delicious. Chicken feet, I recommend trying. They're absolutely delicious. I like them braised long and cooked in the soup. Uh, or cooked out, like boiled and then cooked. But these ones like that are pretty good too. Then you've got meat skewers, flavored in Vietnamese spices. Very delicious. The drinks here, let's talk about the drinks. So the drinks will come with a lot of ice because they put a lot of sugar in. And in Vietnam culture, you kind of let the ice melt and then mix with everything. The drink's supposed to last a long time. So you might find it very sweet when you have it. It looks like balut of some sort. So when you have it, it might taste sweet. Just let the ice melt a bit and you'll be in, in good shape. You won't have any problems. So this is a traditional sweet potato, fried sweet potato snack. It's pretty good. Uh, they take sweet potato, they coat it with something, and it's got like a gooey sweet potato inside. I just had it yesterday for the first time actually. So then you got fried chicken, which is also delicious. There are better places than others here. This is very good too, pha la ba. Very, very good. Uh, you get a piece of banh mi with it usually. I recommend you try that too. There's almost not a thing that I don't recommend you at least try when you come to Vietnam. Oh, let's get away from that. How long have we got? Keep it moving. We gotta get through this section fast. I can't have the music. Okay. So here's some snails. I'm not a big escargot snail guy. You may like it though. I recommend you try it. They definitely spice it up nice. It's just a texture thing for me. I'm starting to come around and like it a bit more, but it's really, really not my thing. What's up, man? What's up, dude? And what do we got over here? Some kind of chicken feet, maybe? Yeah, chicken feet. So chicken feet in all kinds of dairy, different various forms. I absolutely love chicken feet. Uh, I highly recommend you try it. I know it's not a big cuisine back in the States or probably Australia and other places that watch me, but I find it to be delicious. So again, this is more street food snacks. This meat with the cheese isn't bad, it's hit or miss. I would just try it. We got over here. Chicken feet, looks like different kinds. Gotta get away from that too. Hello, xin chào. Oh, oh, looks like he's had a few to drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for my crab guy. Is he not here yet? So one of the best things here is there's a crab guy, a seafood guy, and he's usually right here. And he probably doesn't set up early because there's really no need to because there's not enough people. But absolutely must try this crab place. They cook it in like 15 different ways. Delicious. I spend at least an hour here when I come here eating there. The street sushi, I don't know, not for me. It's warm, been sitting out. This is the most popular thing on this street though. These pieces of pork with uh, cheese on them. This right here. And then here's some takoyaki, which Vietnamese love the Japanese takoyaki. Very, very popular here. Let's see. This is like a breakfast food. So it's like rice, flour, it kind of tastes a lot like potatoes. She gets a crispy crust on it. And then it usually comes with an egg and some rice. It's usually had for breakfast, but also very, very tasty. I don't know the names of all this stuff. It's too much stuff for me to memorize. And I'm not good at that kind of thing. So, sorry, no names. You can look on the signs. More fried chicken over here. I'm trying to go slow. This quail egg thing is a must try. Absolutely must try. It's very, very delicious. There's one famous stall for it. I think it's this one. You can tell which ones are the most famous ones when you come out here because they have the lines. They have all the people there. Here's some uh, 
more falafel bao. Very delicious. There's not much in here that Fats doesn't like. Again, this octopus. There is a particular octopus lady that's really good. Absolutely smoking fantastic. It's got a line. When you come at night, this kind of place, you want to come at night, and it'll have a, a huge line for each place that's got really good food. And it's crazy, crazy at night. There's thousands of people in here at night. Seems you can come during the day. I've never been here this early. It's like, I think 3.30. 3.46. But at about 5 p.m. this will become a, an animal town. I kind of purposely came here early so I could walk around a little easier and show you stuff more quickly. Because we're going to be going to a lot of different locations to film. So this is just the first of many. I forgot how far this thing goes down. All the good foods towards the front and in the middle. This down here doesn't get as busy at night, and it just ends at kind of like a market. But as you can see, this is why I recommend this spot. I actually recommend this as my number one place to come and try street food in, in Saigon. There's a couple other places like this. I'll try to link to all the stuff that I've already filmed so you can kind of judge it for yourself. And that's really it. That's as far as this goes. So at the next location, the first location I took you to is not really a tourist place. As you can see, there's not one tourist here. This is a Vietnamese really like to come here on the weekends and at night, especially the younger crowd from like 15 to 25. It'll be packed because you can come here and eat a bunch of stuff affordable. As you saw on the signs, most of the things are 10, 15, 20, 30 K. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shoot on over to District 1 and start filming stuff that you should probably do there if you're here for your first trip or just want to have a kind of a guide of things to do. So we'll see you there, guys. All right. We are at my second place that I would recommend you come hang out in if it's your first time coming to Saigon or just coming to Saigon. And I'm sure many of you are going to know it. I've filmed here a bunch. You can find all kinds of content video on here. But I am going to put it as my number two place to come uh, after the, the street food. Especially if you're a male, you know, even, even female. Anybody can come here. But if you're a single male, this is definitely one of the places to be. So we are on Bui Ving. I'll give you a brief description of everything. I had to wait an hour at Elise Boo's. And let me tell you, Elise Boo's up their prices too. 60K for a tiger. So that, that's how they're getting away with charging 30 grand to rent one of these things now is you know the bar is then upping their prices on everything pretty soon it'll be 100k for a beer everywhere down here but i'll show you where you can cheaply drink on boy Ving. it's a very lively party street it really gets going at night it's going to be pretty dead now because it's sunday but then we can talk about everything which is the whole point of the video so this is going to be shot over multiple days so let's check it out. This is the famous backpacking street, Bui Ving. This club is just new, retrofitted. I don't think I need an umbrella anymore. Yeah. We're good on umbrella. Now they got a seafood restaurant here now. That's interesting. Okay, so this is the entrance of Boy Ving with this fancy sign, LED sign they put in during COVID. You've got Go To Bar right here. Traditionally, this is where the hookers will stay if you want that kind of action. They'll be here from 10 to 2 a.m. and they'll just sit alone. It's very obvious what the intentions are. All right, we're back. Had to do a little battery swap out. I use the batteries till they go to zero. So yeah, this is the Party Street Boy Ving. It is place you don't want to be coming to all the time if you're here this is a come maybe on the weekends hang out a little bit and don't go crazy and don't lose all your money so we're gonna walk down the gullet as you call it normally pre-covid there would be thousands of people here already even at this time on a Sunday it still hasn't recovered because there's just simply not enough foreign tourists coming back into the country 
So these clubs are very expensive. They're trying to recover their COVID fees, like this ocean bar, this place here. So drinks are gonna be expensive. They're gonna be anywhere from 60K to 100K just for a beer. Cocktail is gonna be 110 to 150K, which in price terms, we're talking $2 to $6 pretty much. And that's pretty high. Cocktails have always been around 100K, which is $4. But everything's getting raised to, to keep up with their raised rents. So there's really nothing they can do about raising the rent unless they've had the lease for a long term. And landlords even have a way of getting out of that. So that's why you're seeing the raised prices here. It is very fun, it can be very fun. You can definitely lose some money here. So these are the places that if you wanna save money, this is where I recommend. This lady's my favorite here, is Quan 98. She's got the good stuff. She's got a vodka for 20K a shot and beers for 30K. So very affordable. So all throughout here, there'll be these stools like this, but they'll go all the way out into the middle of the street. That's where you're gonna want to drink if you're on a budget or if you just wanna save money. Kind of get drunk in this area. There's a Circle K back there. You can just get a bottle of vodka and drink that too and get a buzz going. These are tips that I highly recommend doing. These clubs can be very fun. You can meet women at these clubs very easily. You know, it's pretty simple to go in, get a table, with a couple of your boys, see another group of single chicks, and just continue from there. Not difficult at all. This can take up to pre-COVID, 30 minutes to walk what we're about to walk. Mekong Delta, Coochie Tunnels. Coochie Tunnels are all right. It's not on my list of things to do though. If you're a tall guy, it's not particularly the funnest thing. So Miss Saigon's probably the most Kraken Bar club down here. It's definitely not cheap anymore. It used to be very affordable, but this whole entire indoor spot gets completely full. Even now, even like right after COVID, during COVID, this is always the place to be. It's just a little bit more expensive and the music's super loud. There is good food down here too. If you like Indian food, there's an amazing uh, Indian restaurant down here called Babas which I'd highly recommend you go to. I'd say if you like Indian food, that's a must visit Indian spot to eat food at. In between these videos, I'm gonna show you, in between each location, I'm gonna show you some food places that I would recommend for, for authentic local Vietnamese food here. I'm gonna show you a pho spot, and I'm gonna show you some banh mi spots. Let's see here. So, some of these places are new, some of these are old. Calm. Calm, come on. So as you can see, it's just the beginning of the, the night here. I've seen, while sitting here waiting for the rain to stop, for the hour, I saw a hundred backpackers plus. Coming and going. Their big backpacks on, the, the rain protection, all that stuff. There's definitely been a return of backpacking here. I purposely came here to shoot when there's no music on, so you can hear what I'm talking about. <coughs> this is a very popular expat bar. It's chill. You'll often find this littered with uh, expats, local expats as well. You can get balloons, whiskey, beer. And then to end the tour, we go down African Street. Oh, there's a vape shop down here now. That's kind of cool. I don't remember this being here. Might be new. You can get your vape products. Oh, that's the one I wanted. The Elf Bar. Oh, she's got the Elf Bar. Xin chào. How much is the Elf Bar? The Elf Bar? $300. Okay. I come back when I'm done filming. I want to get that Elf Bar. Some kind of club. So that, that's pretty much Bui Vane. Like I said, it doesn't look lively now, but if you come here on a Friday or Saturday night, it's cracking. I highly recommend that you come check it out. There's also a Burger King around the corner here to the right. So if you want to get some burger, there you go. 
Oh, this guy's selling vapes too. Grand opening. So this already changed hands. I forgot what this was. I've been using the vape, the cigarette vape from Japan and trying not to smoke as much. Here's a motorbike rental place. This is like the typical expat adventure bike for adventuring around Vietnam. So if you're a young guy, I recommend. And I would be an experienced rider. Woogie, I don't think this lasts lasting long. I've said that about a billion times. Alright guys, that's the video on Boy Ving. I'll see you guys at the next location for things you should do when you come to Saigon for the first time. Alright, we are at the third location, Xin Chow. Kind of these really aren't in a row of what's better than another. This is kind of like a first-timer guide to Saigon. So this is famous Win Wei. It's the cleanest walking street in Saigon, possibly one of the cleanest streets in Vietnam. As you can see, there's trash cans everywhere. There's usually an entire crew here cleaning all the time. It, it's been raining for the past two hours. <clears throat> I've been holed up in a bar waiting for rain to clear so I can film this video for you. But Win Wei looks completely dead now, right? So. On the weekends from 7 p.m. to midnight, very, very busy. It's a very good spot to people watch. As you know from my channel, if you are a watcher of the channel watching this video, you know this is one of my favorite streets. I've shot, I can't even count, but countless amounts of content here. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty fun little spot to come to. Uh, let me give you my recommendations of where I like to go, where you can see that Saigon Chill sign over there. That rooftop bar is pretty lovely. It's a little expensive. Everything's more expensive here because the rent costs more. And this is where like the fancy hotels are for District 1. This also is pretty famous, these apartments. These have been vlogged to death. I I've never vlogged them because I'll just let the other YouTubers handle it all. But those are all cool places to sit and people watch as well. I'll include a video for how many people are like out here and about when it's really, really peak, peak, peak time and there's a lot, a lot of people. I mean, I've been waiting for it to stop raining for two hours. Like, If you're curious to why you haven't seen a bunch of content come out lately, it's because it's been raining and I don't want to sit at home and do a video of me sitting on the couch. And other videos have been performing well, so. And then down here, where we're walking now, you have the Redone Wharf, which is also pretty, pretty big and popular. I'm gonna show you a pho spot that you could try for, for some pho ga, which is chicken, chicken pho. I absolutely love pho ga. I think this is one of the best pho ga's in Saigon. It's not sweet. They don't put much sugar in it at all. It tastes almost just like a chicken soup with pho and chicken in it. And, and they take the time to remove any bad parts on the chicken that might be chewy. You'll want to flavor it accordingly. You know, add chili sauce, stuff like that. <clears throat> In my opinion, Hanoi has the best food. As far as Vietnamese food goes. It's more focused on salt than it is sugar. And Saigon's more focused on sugar than it is salt. Uh, some of the best banh mi, pha, bun cha has all been from Hanoi. I, I like salt more than sugar. I'm not a sugar guy. I don't eat any sweets, candies, anything like this. Another honorable mention for a bar to go to, which it's not really my vibe. It's quite a bit expensive and it's difficult to get a good seat is Broma. But some people really like Broma. You go up to the rooftop, you can hang out. They've got some cool seating. Again, expensive. I think it's 100 to 150 K for a drink. You've got Kishi, Kisho over here, which is like uh, what Steve Aoki's dad did, uh, Benihana. So it's a Benihana. It's literally a Benihana. The quality of food is okay, but the experience is pretty cool if you're down here. Let me get over this pho spot. Pho? Yeah, I, I eat this pho, uh, I don't know, at least once a month. When I was uh, eating carbs, I would eat here once a week. My wife likes it too. We both enjoy it. Good old win-win. 
So imagine this, if this is your first time viewing my channel, there's five, 10,000 people here on a weekend sometimes. And it's just great, you can sit down and people watch. There's like entertainers and stuff as well. Dance crews, all kinds of stuff. This guy is cruising. I can't say I'd recommend going fast in the rain. And then of course, there is a lot for the, for the single men. This is uh, the lady bar area called the Texico. If you come down here with you and your mates at night, don't go using a credit card. Don't go running up a tab. Pay for everything cash and pay for each drink as it comes. Don't ever ring that bell. But definitely you can have a few good nights at these places if you just don't go crazy. Monitor what you're spending. I mean, it's full out like lady bars. So almost all the bars around here, like if you go this way, are all lady bars. So it's very easy if you're on Winway, just walk down one of these and you'll find the lady bars. And for some reason, they all decided that this area was where they're gonna do the lady bar stuff. So there you go. And the fog ah is right over here. So this is my, my one of my favorite chicken fuzz, Fo Ha, 19 High Tray. I said it wrong for sure, but it's okay. I don't mind saying things wrong. Very delicious uh, at night and in the morning. This place is absolutely packed. It stretches all the way down. They've got like three storefronts here. See, Fa Ha, Fa Ha, Fa Ha. That's how popular of a Fa place it is. And they've got a really good cabbage and chicken dish too that you put fish sauce on that I really like. I recommend getting multiple things. And then an honorable mention of stuff to do is to go up to B-Texico Tower, which is the cool tower that doesn't have, I guess that helicopter pad isn't very functional. And then if you want a good meal, you can pop into Heidi Lao. Heidi Lao Hot Pot is delicious. I'm sure most of you have had it if you're in the hot pot. This is the Samsung store that I bought my phone at where it was completely just... I'm going to shoot a video on it. Maybe today. So we'll see you at the next thing I want to show you. We're not going to quite be at location number four yet. I've got other stuff I want to shoot. So a bit more things to do on Win Way is... Win Way is ultra expansive. Like, you can walk everywhere to it. So the, the third and... or fourth and fifth location we're going to do they're all in district one. I'm gonna do more list of stuff to do. This is just my five first time tour stuff to do, but you've got Saigon Center here, which is a nice mall. I do recommend it. If you're in this area walking around, it's a great place to go and use the bathroom. They've got plenty of delicious restaurants in there to eat at. So this street we're on now, they just finished this. This was where all the subway construction was. That in, in fact is an entrance exit for a subway right here and right here. So far from what I'm seeing, the subway seems kind of haphazardly built in planning. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to hold my tongue and have faith that Japan designed a good one because Tokyo arguably has the best uh, MRT mass transport system in the world. I think it probably is the best. There's others that rival, but it's really up there for me. So where we're going to go now for the fourth location is the Benton Market. And it's just directly down here. So you can walk all the way over. And yeah, this is gonna be a walking street too. Down here is Pasture Street, where the Pasture original bar is. You just go down here. There used to be a Chuck's Burger down here, which is a pretty well-known burger spot here. Now it's just, uh, I forget the name of the diner. It's such lack lackluster food, I don't recommend it. Eddie's, I think, it's, it's overpriced. It's hit or miss. It's not a consistent product. Chuck's Burger is consistently good. The location's now over by my house in that little Tokyo area. So this is gonna be a pretty happening area eventually. This is gonna be a, also a place to come walk. There's a great pizza spot here too. Where's it at? Pizza Logic. Somewhere down here. Yeah, you go down here and there's Pizza Logic. So here's Saigon Center. All right, so the fourth thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you're in Saigon for your first time is you're going to want to go shopping at the local markets. There's two that I like. Some people really don't like Benton Market. I happen to love it. I think it's a hoot and a holler. You definitely want to negotiate at Benton Market, but then they have Saigon Square, 
which is actually pretty popular with the Vietnamese people too because they actually have fashionable stuff here and uh, quality stuff. It's actual first copies. Some are even production line errors. So you can actually get some pretty nice stuff here for a pretty affordable chunk of change. I have shot videos here before. I'm gonna try to add the links for like me haggling in here, but let's walk in here real quick. You can definitely get some pretty cool stuff in here. I, I've found some really cool shirts, wallets, bags, stuff like this. So I'll show you. We're just gonna do a brief walk around, trying to keep this video under 30 minutes. So Calvin Klein, ciao. Like actual stuff, Abercrombie and Fitch, Supreme, Super Dry, Under Armour. A lot of stuff is copy still, but like it's higher end than what you can get at Benton Market. Now, a lot of the stuff is set price here, yeah. so it's really not negotiating here. But you can negotiate a little bit. You have to be, you know, you you might get 50k off, maybe 100k if it's a high dollar item. But there's no guarantee that you'll get any kind off. It's more set prices here. But as you can see, the quality of stuff is here. Like you can get an, a Louis Vuitton bag. You can get, you know, actual designer stuff. That's pretty decent remix of it. The Fendi pouch I bought here and sent to one of my subscribers and friend was a really high quality uh, copy. So, I mean, this mall is just covered in this. There's an upstairs too. Honorable mentions for markets to go to is also uh, the Russian market. We're gonna go to Bentha Market and film that now. But this is definitely gonna be my number four thing is come to these markets, take a couple hours, walk around, find souvenirs for the family and stuff like that. So I'll see you guys at Bentha Market. All right, our next location for the four things you to do is be shopping is famous Bentha Market. There's probably a million YouTube videos created out of here from all different kinds of YouTubers, different sizes and subscribers and stuff like this haggling here buying stuff here this is a haggle market this is not a market where you come and just pay whatever they tell you everything goes for about 100 to 150k here the more you buy if it's the same item the cheaper it's going to be we're not going to do a full walkthrough i'm going to put up my greatest hits of buying stuff here and haggling so you can try to practice if you want if you're not a good haggler but essentially what i do is just say the price and walk away it's the easiest way don't sit there and haggle back and forth with the price you know, if it's a Hawaiian shirt or something like that, it's 100K, walk away, they'll take it. Ah, it's so much busier in here now. Surprised. Lots of tourists too. Good to see. Yeah, during COVID and after COVID, this would already all be closed. Okay, okay. So it's a gigantic market. It could take you hours to go through this one as well. It's quite a bit bigger than Saigon Square. It's tremendously large. Calm, come on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. You can get all the souvenirs here. You can get Vietnamese coffee. You can get t-shirts. You can get pants. You can get... Uh, it, the quality of these bags aren't as good as the other ones at, at Saigon Square. Saigon Square, like I said, actually gets... Come on. Come on. It's no thank you. If you don't want something, just calm. Come on. It's no thank you. Or you can just keep walking. So there's also like a hawker section in here. Let's go, I think it's over here. So I'll show you that real quick. I'm trying to keep this video compact. But there's plenty of content up here. I probably shot 50 videos here, no joke. So the, the food here is actually tremendous. Some of these ladies have been in these stalls for 30 years plus. So they've been here a really long time making this food. I can't remember which stalls have been here longer, but traditionally what I recommend in a market like this is you wanna to go to where everyone else is eating. So, there's so much good stuff here. I've had one of my best congies here ever. Calm, come on. I've had one of my best congies here. Oh, there's some live streamer dude here. Twitcher. He's got the shitty backpack. Live you solo garbage. Do not make that purchase if you're thinking about being a streamer. It's completely outdated, antiquated technology at this point. There's zero point to buying that thing. So there's all kinds of good food here. Like I said, I had one of my best congies here. You can find pretty much any kind of Vietnamese dish throughout here. And like I said, when it's busy, you can tell which place has the best food because there'll be the most amount of people there. So this place is definitely a must visit in my book. It's absolutely fun. Plan for an hour or two here at least, especially if you're gonna buy souvenirs and clothes for people back home. And make sure you try on stuff, get the right size. 
So that's Bentham Market that's shopping. This is just two examples of these markets. There's one of these markets in every single district, if not multiple ones. There's one in Chinatown that's tremendous. There's a wholesale market in Chinatown that's tremendous, which you can buy all kinds of stuff for how, like all different kinds of things. It, it very much worth looking at these markets. There's, like I said, one in every single district. Uh, you would do yourself a disservice to not come into one of these at least once and look around the stuff if you're not even buying. As you can see, Vietnam is rapidly growing. This is going to be a new super high-end uh, condo project with masteries, just like the one that's going on in Golden River. So this is going to be a live. This was going to be a Hilton Hotel, and they dumped out during COVID. So I was told. It could have been changed again now, but uh, I'm about 100% sure it's masteries because that's what the lady told me when I looked at the other masteries project. And there's actually a really cool club for honorable mentions. I don't particularly like it, but I've learned that things that I don't like doesn't mean other people won't like. So let me take you over there real quick. Let me show you. It's called District K or District 7, some shit like that. I think District K. It used to be a tremendous place. It used to be one of my favorite spots to come with my uh, wife. We used to love to go there on the uh, weekend. It used to be this open market type deal with huge seating like a lunch table style seating, like gigantic. And it used to be that it had food from all over the world. It had beer on draft, like good beer. Now it's turned into this huge club, but it's very popular among the Vietnamese and expats. I myself, not a big fan of it. It is kind of chill on the music though. And then I can give you the honorable mention for uh, pizza, 4P Pizza here. Tremendous location. Goes three floors up. Absolutely delicious. And then I'll show you the, uh, the District K. It's a cool spot. Uh, I got a couple friends that love coming here. So, you know, for me, it's a hard pass. I don't like sitting in a club. The music isn't incredibly loud and you can get a table that's kind of quiet and talk, so. There's lots of attractive uh, people here. It's kind of a, a place where like people with a little bit more money like to go. Man, it's really raining. Gotta shut the camera down, move locations. So you'll see, it's like a big playground club. Oh, this is it, District K. And then I gotta put my equipment away, it's starting to rain. And here it is. It's totally dead now, no one's in here yet. But like, as you can see, it looks like a Las Vegas style inside. All right, guys, stay frosty. See you at the next location, the number five. Xinjiao, all right, we are at the fifth and final location. This is by far, no means, this is the only five places I recommend. We're gonna have another video of other places that you must check out when you first come to Saigon. We are at the famous Notre Dame Cathedral, which has been getting renovated for four or five years, quite a long time doesn't look like it'll get done anytime soon. You can still get some good pictures. And then we have over here the famous post office. This is also very famous. Both these spots are pretty famous to come and take pictures at. So if you're like a picture guy, as you can see, it's a pretty cool. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I can venture to say that this is uh, from the French. I'm not sure, but somebody can correct me in the comment section. And then the final spot we're gonna go, this is just an introductory guide, like what this whole video is. It's like five things you should certainly and definitely see and do when you come to Saigon for the first time. And these are things that you can do inside of one day. So if you're here for a short trip, this is gonna be a pretty good guide for you. You absolutely must have banh mi, you absolutely must have some pho. You can, if you can get some bun cha, get some bun cha. If you can get some bun ba hue, get that. There's lots of delicious foods. You don't want to skip on eating the delicious cuisine that Vietnam has to offer. It's probably one of the most best things about Vietnam. And of course, all the partying. I showed you the District K Club. You would do yourself a disservice if you didn't even go to a club for one night and see what it is. I tried to make this guide for people of all ages. You know, the only thing I wouldn't take my kids to on that list is Boy Vain. You could take them to District K if they wanted to see how a club goes. Can't say I'd super recommend that either but you know it's up to you you can use your discretion 
Now this is Book Street. You can go down Book Street on a Sunday and there will be tons of people having coffee here. It's, it's literally Vietnamese books. Kind of interesting to check out. You can see what books they choose to translate into uh, Vietnamese. Then down here is Turtle Lake. You just keep walking this way and you'll be at Turtle Lake. So you can't miss it, it's a lake. That is my guide. I hope you guys found it to be useful. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay frosty. See you on the next one. Peace out.